hello everyone welcome to the class so in this class i am going to explain you about organo sulfur chemistry before going to topic let me explain you about briefly sulfur this sulfur generally present in 16th group of periodic table this group is called oxygen family so in this oxygen family the it consists of the elements oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium radioactive element polonium and livermorium so in this we are discussing about sulfur this sulfur is a chemical element with the symbol s and its atomic number 16 and it is non metallic in nature it is 10th most common element by the mass in the universe and the 5th most common on earth and elemental sulfur is a bright yellow and crystalline solid at room temperature this is an essential element for all life generally this sulfur always present in the form of organo sulfur compounds or metal sulfides sulfur is generally present in three amino acids they are namely cysteine cysteine and methionine of course it is present in two vitamins such as biotin which is also called as vitamin h and thiamine called as vitamin b1 which are all organo sulfur compounds let us come to the organo sulfur what is organo sulfur the sulfur the sulfur which is directly connected to carbon so carbon because of this part this is organic part so this sulfur is connected to organic part so that is the reason this is called organo sulfur compounds so in all organo sulfur compounds you can observe the sulfur is connected to carbon atom let us discuss different kind of organo sulfur compounds which exist in our life that is for example allicin which is active flavor compound in crushed garlic as i told you previously cysteine cysteine is an amino acid which contains a thiol group methionine also an amino acid containing a sulfide group and there are other molecules suppose you see very important that is penicillin okay which is an antibiotic of course sulfonamides also called as sulfur drugs so sulfur mustard so all these compounds are considered as organo sulfur compounds where the sulfur is directly connected to carbon next let us discuss about the bonding present in sulfur compounds as i told you the sulfur which is present in 16th group of the periodic table and its atomic number is 16 so its electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 we can also write like this neon 3s2 3p4 so the sulfur in ground state it has two electrons in 3s orbital whereas four electrons in 3p orbital in that you have two lone electrons so because of this reason sulfur can form two covalent bonds and in the first excited state the electrons present in the p 3p orbital one of the electron excited to 3d orbital so that it gains it gets four lone electrons so by losing this four electrons the sulfur can get plus four oxygen state or it can also form four bonds suppose sulfur in second excited state the electron present in 3s orbital also excited to 3d orbital so that you will get total 
lone electrons so that the sulfur can also form six covalent bonds so that means sulfur can form two bonds or four bonds or six bonds in these all conditions the sulfur can exist in neutral state for example suppose, suppose sulfur has three bonds so then you will get a positive charge on sulfur if suppose sulfur has five bonds so the sulfur also has a positive charge on it so finally the sulfur can exhibit different kind of oxidation numbers like minus 2 0 plus 2 plus 4 and plus 6 generally the oxidation number minus 2 occurs in sulfides all sulfides generally they have a minus 2 oxygen state in sulfur and uh, the oxidation number of the sulfur 0 generally exists in elemental sulfur it is a site oxidation number plus 2 generally occurs in sulfur monoxide and uh, element C and also the sulfides sulfides and uh, SO2 generally they have plus 4 oxidation state in sulfur and uh, sulfur trioxides and sulfates or sulfur sulfuric acid generally they have plus 6 oxidation state in sulfur so finally in conclusion the sulfur which is having two covalent bonds four and six generally the sulfur is having neutral state whereas if it forms three bonds it gets a positive charge if it forms five bonds it gets a positive charge this concept is very important in mechanisms with this discussion let us move on to the a new concept that is elide what is elide elide is the organic compound in which the positively charged hetero atom such as nitrogen phosphorus or sulfur is directly connected to negatively charged carbon atom that is called elide that means any hetero atom a positively charged hetero atom if it is directly connected to carbon directly connected to carbon atom so then this is called elide or you can also say the compounds which are having oppositely charges opposite charges on adjacent atoms then also you can call it as elide or these opposite charges are present at the adjacent positions or vicinal positions so that the vicinal ionic intermediates are also called as elides so elides can say different types so we can explain in different types that means the organic compound in which the positively charged hetero atom is directly connected to negatively charged carbon atom or the compounds which are having oppositely charges on opposite charges on adjacent atoms or vicinal ionic intermediates are also called as elides okay now come to the general formula see x plus y minus so in this x is a hetero atom and y is carbon so the x in this elide is maybe nitrogen or phosphorus or sulfur so we are discussing about sulfur so that if you keep sulfur here so the positively charged sulfur is directly connected to carbon okay this is called as sulfur elide so what happens here the positively charged sulfur is directly connected to negatively charged carbon atom so that is called sulfur elide okay sulfur elide so there are two different type of examples you can consider see this is so it is dimethyl sulfonium methylide okay dimethyl there are two methyls present here dimethyl sulfonium methylide which is called as sulfur elides okay sulfur elides where the sulfur that means positively charged sulfur is directly connected to negatively charged carbon atom other example is here it is dimethyl sulfoxonium methylide or 
ऑक्सो डाइमिथेल सल्फोनियम मिथाइलाइड डाइमिथेल ऑक्सो सल्फोनियम मिथाइलाइड वेयर द सल्फर इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज्ड हियर सो पॉजिटिवली चार्ज्ड सल्फर इज डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड टू नेगेटिवली चार्ज्ड कार्बन आयन ओके सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व हियर द सल्फर इन दिस केस इट हैज थ्री बॉन्ड्स आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी सल्फर इफ इट इज इन थ्री बॉन्ड्स सो इट गेट्स पॉजिटिव चार्ज और हियर यू कैन कंसीडर the sulfur which is having five bonds so that the sulfur is having positive charge so this dimethyl sulfonium methylide also can write like this okay so this is also called as elide sulfur elide where indirectly the sulfur gets positive charge here whereas this carbon is negative charge and this dimethyl oxo sulfonium methylide can also write like this Okay, this is also called as sulfur elide. So these two are very important examples for sulfur elides. So finally, the sulfur sulfur elide has a general formula where sulfur is connected to two methyl groups and which is bonded to a negatively charged. carbon atom right so this is the general formula for sulfur halide so this sulfur which is having already methyl groups here so but this carbon carbon so which is having a negative charge has two different type of substituents based on the substituents present on this carbon this sulfur halides are classified into two different types okay classification of sulfur halides so the two different type of sulfur halides are one is stabilized sulfur halides which are also called as unreactive sulfur halides stabilized or unreactive sulfur halides another type is unstabilized or reactive reactive halides based based on the substituents present on the carbon in halide okay based on the substituents present on the carbon these halides are two different types one is stabilized or unreactive once it is stabilized it is unreactive or less reactive and one more category is unstabilized or destabilized or reactive okay if it is destabilized it is reactive we know that stability is indirectly proportional to reactivity where if it is stable it has less reactive if it is unstable it is more reactive so when it is stabilized and when it is unstabilized so the classification is mainly depends on the substituents present on this carbon so if r1 and r2 these substituents are electron withdrawing groups suppose this sulfur halide having substituents on this carbon are electron withdrawing groups so generally they are stabilized or less reactive sulfur halides for example if you take this example here it is diphenyl sulfonium phenacylide okay diphenyl sulfonium phenacylide that means where this carbon negatively charged carbon is connected to okay connected to electron withdrawing group that is carbonyl why it is stabilized because the negatively charged negative charged carbon is undergoing delocalization here or is it undergoing resonance with this adjacent carbonyl group so that this car carbon negatively charged carbon is stabilized that is why it is unreactive or less reactive you can consider another example here where dimethyl sulfonium allylide okay dimethyl sulfonium allylide where this negatively charged carbon is connected to an alkene part that means this negative charge negative charge is diesel undergoing delocalization with this alkene so that it is also stabilized and you can also consider the substituent here cyanide okay nitrile or cyanide where this negatively charged carbon also undergoing delocalization with this cyanide so that this halide becomes again stabilized so you can keep any kind of electron with the rank group on this carbon negatively charged carbon so that you can stabilize this halide so these are all coming under stabilized sulfur halides come to the other category 
that is unstabilized or reactive when it becomes reactive i like so the substance present on this negatively charged carbon is electron donating groups if they are electron donating groups what happens because of the duration of this electrons from this electron donating groups this negatively charged carbon becomes destabilized that means it uh, it is very reactive towards the reactions for example if you take this example it is dimethyl sulfonium methylide dimethyl sulfonium methylide okay so this is one kind of example for unstabilized or reactive halide where the other example is dimethyl sulfonium ethylide okay that means you are attaching attaching a methyl group which is electron donating group or you can also attach this dimethyl sulfonium cyclohexyl methylide okay cyclohexyl methylide so this that means increasing electron donating groups on this negatively charged carbon atom makes this carbanion which is a carbanion a uh, very unstable that means it is very reactive towards nucleophilic addition reactions so in conclusion based on substituents this sulfur halides are two types one is stabilized halides and one more is unstabilized halides when the substituents are electron withdrawing groups then they are called stabilized halides and if they are un, uh, having substituents or electron donating groups then they are uh, unstabilized halides so this sulfur halides are two types that means stabilized and unstabilized so once we know the classification next we have to know about the preparation or generation of this sulfur halides so how to prepare this sulfur halides so we have different type of methods to prepare this sulfur halides the first method is the reaction of base the reaction of base with the sulfonium ion can generate the sulfur halides here there are two examples one is taking dimethyl sulfide treating with alkyl halide and one more is dimethyl sulfoxide with the methyl iodide so the reaction of reaction of sulfonium salts sulfonium salts with the base with the base so generally they generate the sulfur halides first we need to get the sulfonium salts first you take dimethyl sulfide which is having lone pair it can act as a nucleophile so treat with the methyl iodide okay methyl iodide so this dimethyl sulfide undergoes nucleophilic substitution reaction and produce sulfonium salt okay sulfonium salt if you observe here the sulfur is having three bonds so that it getting positive charge and this positive charge is stabilized by counter anion once you get this sulfonium ion this is sulfonium ion once you get this sulfonium ion now treat this sulfonium ion with the base so this base abstract this proton okay abstract this proton and produce dimethyl sulfonium methylide which is halide so this is one way to prepare this sulfur halides you can also take an example that is dimethyl sulfoxide treat with the methyl iodide where here you are also getting a salt this salt if you treat with the base which abstract the proton which produces vicinal ionic intermediate called sulfur halide sulfur halide so this is one kind of method to prepare the sulfur halides come to the other reaction where dimethyl sulfide reaction of dimethyl sulfide 
dimethyl sulfide with the carbene carbene as you know carbene is an electrophile so dimethyl sulfide treat with the carbene which is having a vacant orbital so it is a neutral electrophile so that it can accept the electrons from this sulfur and gives you directly elide so this is another method where you can prepare this sulfur halides by treating this sulfide sulfide with the carbene carbene so carbenes are generally electrophiles they are neutral electrophiles this is one method and another method is you can also synthesize the stabilized elides so stabilized elides means you should have electron withdrawing groups on the carbon atom how to prepare them so you can prepare by treating this sulfonium halides sulfonium halides with the phenyl that is aryl halide here in this case you are treating with the halobenzene okay treat with the halobenzene what happens here the nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place so in presence of base that means you have prepared this halides from the sulfonium salt so that is the reason you are using here base and it produces a stabilized halide where this carbon is connected to a phenyl so this negative charge is undergoing delocalization so that is the reason it becomes stable halide stable halide you can also prepare in another method where you can treat halide dimethyl sulfonium methylide with the acid halide with the acid halide it also undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction and produce a stabilized halide that means i we have already discussed this the negative charge is undergoing delocalization where it is stabilized by this electron with the ring group so in this way you can also prepare the synthesis of stabilized halide so there is another method that is you can also prepare this halides by the reaction of dmso dimethyl sulfoxide with the base with base so what happens first dimethyl sulfoxide when you treat with the base it abstract the proton from one of the methyl group so that it produces an anion that anion is called dimethyl anion dimethyl anion which is a very basic one so it can also abstract the protons so once you get this uh, dimethyl anion now treat this dimethyl anion with the sulfonium salt sulfonium salt this dimethyl anion abstract the proton from this sulfonium salt and produce sulfur halide the same thing you can also treat with the, the salt dimethyl sulfoxonium salt with the dimethyl anion which abstract the proton and produce the organo sulfur compounds so these are the four main methods to prepare this sulfur halides or organo sulfur compounds in the organic synthesis process so once we know the preparation methods for this organo sulfur compounds so next we have to know about the properties properties of the halide which we have generated see if you observe this halide halide where this carbon atom has a negative charge which is connected to a hetero atom here that is sulfur which is electro positive so depends on the substituents present on this carbon so this halide is whether it is stabilized or unstabilized halides so the main property of this halide is the presence of negative charge on this carbon makes this carbon nucleophilic so that this halide generally undergo nucleophilic attack in the reactions what are all we are performed with this halides so based on this nucleophilic property of this carbon carbon this organo sulfur compounds have different kind of applications let us discuss about the applications one by one so the reactivity of sulfur halides the first reaction is 
called Johnson Cori Chekowski reaction. Johnson Cori Chekowski reaction, which is sometimes also referred as CCR Cori Chekowski reaction. Cori Chekowski reaction, which is a chemical reaction. It is used for the synthesis of epoxides, aziridines, the means three membered heterocyclic ring, and it can also use for synthesis of cyclopropanes. So the use of organosulfur compounds here is to prepare different kind of cyclic compounds like epoxides, aziridines and cyclopropanes. For example, if you treat this sulfur iodide, that means sulfonium iodide, if you treat this sulfonium iodide with the carbonyl compounds and amines, generally it gives you epoxides and aziridines. Whereas if you treat this sulfoxonium iodide with the alpha beta unsaturated compounds, they generally gives you cyclopropane derivatives. So these are all called Johnson Cori Chekowski reaction. Here this sulf sulfoxonium iodide generally referred as Chekowski Cori Chekowski reagent. It is called as Cori Chekowski reagent. So this reaction also called as Cori Chekowski reaction where the oxosulfonium, the misal dimethyl or dialkyl oxosulfonium iodide when you treat with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl which produces cyclopropyl derivative okay so what kind of mechanism involved in this reactions the mechanism for the synthesis of epoxides as as it is is see first you have a sulfonium iodide which is also called as vicinal ionic intermediates where the positively charged sulfur is connected directly to negatively charged carbon atom so here the property of this carbon with a negative charge is nucleophile now when you treat this with uh, a carbonyl compound or imine, so keep just generally X. Here X, where X is oxygen or NH. That means imines. Once you treat with this, what happens here? The mechanism starts with the nucleophilic attack onto the electrophilic center. So, for example, here this carbon which is having negatively charged in elide acts as a nucleophile, it attacks onto the electrophilic center of this carbonyl compounds or imines so that this pi, pi electron shift onto this oxygen. So here you will get a Jutter ionic intermediate see you will get a Jutter ionic intermediate okay now this anion this anion also acts as a nucleophile and has to attack at the electrophile here there are two different type of electrophiles you can observe where sulfur also has a positive charge and this carbon which is connected to a good leaving group here so this dimethyl sulfide is a good leaving group dimethyl sulfonium is a good leaving group so that it is always ready to leave from this carbon so that this carbon gets a positive charge so that this oxygen anion or nitrogen anion has the affinity towards this carbon instead of sulfur here because the sulfur is a good leaving group so that this oxy anion attacks onto this carbon so here there is a loss of dialkyl sulfide gives you a cyclic heterocyclic heterocyclic derivative where if you have x equal to o then this is called oxyrene or epoxide if it is x is n 
then it is aziridin so this is all about mechanism so the mechanism first involved by the nucleophilic attack so the nucleophilic carbon present in the eyelid generally attack onto this electrophilic center which gives you a jitter ion jitter ion or betaine intermediate this betaine intermediate where it has the oxy anion it has affinity to attack that means it has affinity towards the carbon over the sulfur so it attacks onto the carbon carbon because here the sulfur is a good living group so that means the sulfonium is a good living group so the loss of this uh, dialkyl sulfide leads to the our required product where this is epoxide or azeridin so you can also consider another mechanism where the Chekhovsky reagent Chekhovsky reagent that is dimethyl dimethyl oxosulfonium methylide when you treat with this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds here also this carbon present in this elide acts as a nucleophile and it attacks preferably it try to attack 1 4 addition okay preferably 1 4 addition followed by ring closing already we mentioned that this oxy anion has affinity towards the carbon instead of sulfur because this sulfur mighty the sulfonium uh, mighty is a good living group so that this carbon gets a good electrophilic character so that there is a ring closing takes place and you will get a cyclopropyl derivative cyclopropyl derivative so when you use Cori Chakowski reagent with the 1,4 that means sorry alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound it generally prefers 1,4 addition gives you a cyclopropyl derivative cyclopropyl derivative in the both cases uh, sulfonium ilide and the sulfoxonium ilide we have observed that the carbon which is bearing negative charge which is bearing negative charge generally acts as a nucleophile and it starts the reaction by attacking onto the electrophilic center electrophilic center in the case of in the case of uh, sulfonium ilide sulfonium ilide which is reactive so that it is directly attacking onto the uh, one two addition that means hard electrophile whereas this sulfoxonium ilide that means this negative charge which is connected to that means uh, connected to sulfoxonium ion so that it is less reactive so that it attacks onto the soft electrophile that is why you are ending up with the cyclopropyl derivative if you observe this reaction carefully that is johnson cori chakowski reaction where the sulfonium ilide or sulfoxonium ilide when they reacts with the carbonyl compounds or imines or uh, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds you are ending up with the a, a product that is generally it results a trans product it results always trans product so that means it is a trans diastereoselective reaction we know that cis and trans isomers are diastereomers so that here the formation of trans isomer is major over the cis isomer so that the trans diastereo selectivity we observe in this johnson cori chakowski reaction the trans diastereo selectivity in this reaction will be discussed in the next video thank you